It's Casey Arena from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, City of Champions, rocking the black and gold. We are having our family over today for game day, and we're fueling up with a nice, healthy, and nutritious, powerful, packed, full of so many awesome ingredients laid before me here. And we're going to be making some food for all of us to enjoy. I'm a 24 year old personal trainer. I have a health and physical <clears throat> education degree in in health and physical education, that made sense, teaching degree in health and physical education, and I also run a food and fitness blog where I share a bunch of my gluten-free recipes on powercakes.net. So speaking of power cakes, basically you might be asking what that is, and that's okay because a lot of people ask us that question. That is what my blog is based off of, but I also love to share it with my friends and family too. Basically like a protein pancake, you can make single serve for yourself, or when we have family over like today, Sundays are our usual day to make a big breakfast or snack to fuel up for the day. Especially game day, you want to have a lot of energy to cheer for your team no matter what their record is during the year. So stay true. <laughs> stay true to your team. Cakes, but we're going to make enough for our family and friends all to share. What a power cake basically is... <laughs> I'm going to welcome in mama cakes here. That's what I call my mom. That's what I call her. <laughs> call my mom. She is the one that started the name Power Cakes. She would basically call our protein pancakes in the morning Power Cakes. Before your soccer games. Before my soccer games. It's quite yeah. <laughs> and yeah, when you were just a little girl, we wanted to make sure that you had plenty to eat and um, had a lot of energy for the day to play your soccer games. So <laughs> I, would make, I, would make, I would make protein power cakes on the grill. Would just add some protein power? powder to the pancakes, <laughs> and we were good for the rest of the day. We knew for sure that you would be able to work with the No problem with all that power inside of me. <laughs> so how it becomes a power cake is that we would add protein powder to our pancake mix and make from scratch. I mean, I am a full believer in doing what's right for your body, nourishing it, giving it what it needs, also living a nice balance. dinner, if you really want, snacks, dessert, literally you can make them all different ways. So They can be sweet and savory. They can be savory. We've made pizza ones. Today we're going to do a little bit of savory take because with the football game, we've got so many like dips, chips, salsa, hummus, all that really good stuff. So why not have a little bit of sweet, healthy kick in there as well? So let's get started with the power cake. So this is my favorite bowls. I got this from my boyfriend's mom at like an antique store. This is my favorite thing. All right, so it basically starts with, let's do our liquid ingredients first. Uh, lots of All right, so pumpkin, we're going to start with, it holds everything, it holds everything together. So a lot of times you'll see like pumpkin or applesauce or a banana added into baking, um, baking recipes to pull things together. And pumpkin also just gives it like a nice fall flavor. And during football season, it's 
usually fall into winter, so pumpkin is like huge. So we're just going to add in our pumpkin. That's about a cup, <clears throat> a cup of pumpkin, into our big old bowl. That's the All right. So next, we're going to add a mashed banana. So it's really good to get a brown. The more brown it is, not black. You don't want to get that um, that mushy. <laughs> But the more brown and spotted, it's just a little more ripe, so it'll be easier to mash up. So you basically just put your banana in a bowl, and I just take a fork to it, and mash up the banana. The... Also, the banana, banana it adds sweetness, too, to your baking mix. Um, if you weren't looking to add any other kind of sweeteners, we tend to stay away from white processed sugar just because it, I mean, I believe in everything in moderation if you do have it whenever, but if we're going to make something that's going to carry us and do a bunch of different days or for a big group of us, we'll usually use different sweeteners. So banana is actually a really great way to sweeten the baked goods without adding um, any processed sugar to it. So now my banana bowl has turned into my garbage bowl, which Rachel always uses and I do too instead of running to the garbage every time. Big old garbage bowl right there. Mine's not as pretty as her. She's like a nice pretty one. But anywho, so pumpkin and banana in the bowl. Next, we've got some vanilla extract. Simple, but adds so much flavor. That's about two teaspoons of vanilla. Let's go in there. I need like a whole garbage bowl. Little 
nifty blender. I'm gonna blend it up so it turns into flour. seconds, especially if you have a nice blender too, or any really blender would work. Um, if you have just a big blender that you would make just smoothies in, I suggest maybe finding a food processor to do that, just because it gets it pretty fine. It doesn't have to be super fine, but just enough that it resembles a flour consistency. So it's a cup of rolled oats turned into flour, and that'll go in there. And then you're gonna do a half cup of regular rolled oats that haven't been touched. So just the plain old rolled oats. That just adds some texture and chewiness to the flour cake. And we've got some cinnamon. I love cinnamon. I'm like a cinnamon fiend. So I would probably add more cinnamon than the average person. But I suggest about a tablespoon of cinnamon. That'll give enough um, flavor in there. But I just put cinnamon on everything. It's so good. So we've got Flaxseed. So why I like to use flaxseed, not that it's, well it also helps hold things together. So maybe if you do stay away from eggs, you can actually make an egg out of flax. If you add, I think it's a tablespoon of flax and three tablespoons of warm water combined together, make a flax egg. Um, but this one we're using eggs in. So we're going to add the flax for a nice nutritional benefit as well as like a texture benefit too. Flax is full of um, all the omega fatty acids that um, we need in our bodies and that we don't, I think, get enough of. And it's not something that needs to be feared. It actually can come in a flax of the seed. So in here you'll see that it's ground flax and it actually comes in a seed to begin with. So when you see it in the ball fin maybe, you'll see seeds. And again, you can grind them like I just did with the, um, with the oats or you can put them into like a coffee grinder would be good. Apparently when you eat the flax as the seed, it doesn't get digested, di digested, absorbed, I can't really speak, it doesn't get absorbed as well as it does when you break it down into the flax meal. So you might see both and be confused, but that's okay. So I would hint towards the flax meal um, unless you want to grind your own and get the flax seed. So we have here about a fourth cup of flax. Not only does it have great health benefits too, but it also has fiber and healthy fats. So you're getting a real big nutritional bang for your buck, adding power into our cake. So we've got about a fourth cup or so of flax that's gonna go in. And it also helps hold everything together. You'll see that if you let it sit for a little bit after you mix it all, it'll get thicker as it sits because the flax is literally absorbing liquid, which is pretty cool. Then we're gonna add about a teaspoon of baking powder. Help that guy put that guy out in the oven a little bit. And last thing to make it powerful, which can be optional, but around here we like to use um, a nice like plant-based, we use a plant-based protein, but you can also use a whey protein if that works for you. I like to pick ones that are low in artificial ingredients. So I know protein powder can be like a very confusing topic for people to find what they like or dislike or that tastes good. We found all different kinds We've tried all different kinds at our house and have always kind of come back to a plant-based one, meaning that it doesn't have any animal products or whey protein in it. But if it, if you like one that's whey um, or plant-based, I suggest finding one with that's sweetened naturally. So maybe sweetened with stevia, stevia, that can be studied or whey, or like some that's not loaded with artificial colors and dyes. There's a lot out there that are, and I just think putting you know, the closest to earth, even though protein powder is probably a little bit different than that, but just putting something that's natural in your body is a great way to add some benefits into your cake here. So we've got a, I think this is a vanilla protein powder. The vanilla really goes well with this mix. You can also, they have like chocolate protein powders and um, berry and all different flavors. So you can literally change up your power cake to whatever flavor you want to serve to your friends on game day. I'll show the scoop size about one scoop that's a usual scoop and you'll see most of them are usually around this size it's about I would say three or four tablespoons maybe of protein powder probably four tablespoons and that would be the right amount to add in so that's really it so you basically got your wet ingredients that are all 
really good for you and you've got your dry ingredients that are all really great for you too and it blends it together boom power cake in your mouth so today we will serve this up to our friends after we bake it we're just gonna mix this and you'll see it'll come together really really nicely and honestly if you let it sit for just a few more minutes or maybe not even that long you'll see that the flax will actually start to thicken up the mix. So it just blends together so nicely, smooth. You'll see the oats in there, giving it some texture, the flax, everything is coming together. It smells so good. It smells so good. Sorry, I just got a whiff of the pumpkin. So not only is this obviously great to help power up, but it's also gonna help fuel your muscles and loaded with protein, fiber, healthy fats, carbohydrates that are good for you. Um, no need to fear, you know, the carbs give us energy from the oats and everything. And you get your protein boost too from the eggs and the protein powder. And the oats and things too have protein in it too. So you get it all over the place for a nice power pack cake. All right, so how I'm going to divvy this up. Sometimes we put them into round glass pans and make it more like a really look like a cake, like a round cake. You could do that. Um, we could also make it into muffins. We are going to use, <clears throat> excuse me, we are going to use two um, 8x8s, 8 8x8 8 pans um, to show that you can literally, if you wanted to do half of the mix as the pumpkin mix and then half as like cocoa, for example, or cocoa powder, make it chocolatey if that's what you're feeling, you can split it in half and add some cocoa powder maybe and have two different ones for your friends and family. Today we're just gonna do pumpkin. I will move my garbage bowl. And a little tip from my crafty side of the <coughs> brain is to, and I've probably seen this from someone, someone else too, is to cut the parchment paper to fit your pan. Just a few steps to make it To make it a little easier on yourself and it'll come out of the pan beautifully. So I basically take it and then roll it the opposite way and it takes the, the crinkle out of it and it lays a little bit flatter and then that'll go in the bottom of your 8x8 pan. That's a little messy because we just used it to make some other powder cakes too so totally fine. Put that in there. And when it comes to baking these, it really is so simple to just throw things in a bowl. And that's kind of how the power cakes happen. Um, throwing things in that we like, you know, or throwing things in. I honestly bake like I cook. Like I throw things in. I'm probably like going against every baker out there. But I, I tend to just throw things in and see if it works. Um, keeping most of the things the same, like the baking powder ratios or the flour to liquid ratios. But kind of just throwing in different flavors and seeing how it comes out. And that's kind of how these recipes got created and why our family likes them so much I think because we make all different kind to suit what everybody likes but it's super super simple to make and they don't have to be doesn't have to be something to be afraid of to bake so excuse me as I make a mess here so half of it will go in to the pan and just spread it out so that it is nice and even around the pan and don't be afraid to get dirty because that's what sinks are for or as my parents would like to say they like to clean up after me because I'm so a child in the kitchen who likes to play with food so it's all good though you have to enjoy the process so we would basically put two of these together and put the other one into the other 8 by 8 pan which happens to be in the oven so if you want to follow me to the oven. <laughs> you can do it, Ange. Follow me to the oven. <laughs> My sister-in-law is the most amazing camera woman ever. Okay, so we are going to put it into a 350 oven for 20 minutes. Literally, how much more simpler? How much more simpler? How much more simple can you get? Throwing it into 350 for 20 minutes. Let me set that. Off on us here, and then I've already got one that's that's been baked that has baked already. So I'm gonna actually assemble, and you'll see 
excuse me, it comes out golden brown, beautiful. So I will assemble the other one. When we have family over, we like to make like to make enough that you either hopefully don't run out, or if you do, then you know everybody liked it. So that's a good thing. But or you can take it, like my mom said, for the next day to work, to school, or wherever you're going, maybe running errands or whatever you're doing. So it's always good to have leftovers. So we make a bunch for the week to kick off our week. Let's see. get the air bubbles out and just make it a nice flat so you'll see like a square right so you've got two squares going into the oven and we will bake for 20 minutes I'm actually gonna re set that just so we're good all right so while these cool and while our other ones bake we are going to make three dipping sauces for the power cake. So the power cakes are pretty good on their own. Not gonna lie, pretty delicious. But, a big circle to put it in the same spot. But um, we thought for game day, it'd be fun to have different dipping sauces for everyone to use and put it on a nice platter to serve it on. So, bring the platter over here. Real simple, and then we'll put the power cake So, around. who doesn't love chocolate? peanut butter, and berries. Anyone out there love that? Woohoo! Woo! Okay, so yeah, woo, our audience is with us. All right, we've got cocoa powder for the first one, we're gonna make a chocolate sauce. So I just call this my chocolate sauce. So, so simple, literally three ingredients, and you're done. So this is another eyeball type of recipe where you kind of just watch as it's happening to see how thick you want it. It's literally so easy though. So take cocoa powder, dark cocoa powder. I like, we like here. My mom, we like our dark chocolate over here. But you can also use regular cocoa powder. We just use the unsweetened kind so that you can gauge your sweetness to maybe your audience or to yourself. So take your cocoa powder. It's about a fourth cup of dark cocoa powder. And it goes. And I like to use stevia. So liquid stevia, which is just pressed from the stevia leaf. Um, you've probably seen a lot about it out there, stevia, all different kinds, and um, I'm obviously not a doctor to say what is what is the best maybe for you, but I like to use um, just the purest I can find. It doesn't have a lot of like added ingredients to it, so still sometimes I like to sneak in things like that to natural ingredients. But stevia, this is just stevia from the leaves, and for us, it's just a few drops. Our cap's a little happy, so it lets a lot out, but we're going to... Add in a few drops of that, depending on your depending on your sweetness level. You're gonna need that again, but you um you might want more or less depending on. Or you could also use some maple syrup in there if you wanted, um, coconut nectar, whatever kind of sweetener you'd like, or none at all if you just like the dark chocolate. But this is a nice healthy way to give your family some chocolate with their cake, right? So you're gonna take some almond milk. We've got a bunch in here, but you're not gonna use all of that. You're just gonna add enough, probably about a fourth to a half cup until you start to see the um, cocoa powder come together like a like a sauce. So it'll be a nice liquidy sauce. Not too liquidy. Let's see. Two, three. Okay, so that's give or take about four tablespoons. And say it gets too liquidy, right? And you're like, uh-oh, way too liquidy. Just add some more cocoa powder to it and it'll just thicken it right back up. And inhale some as you as you mix too so you'll see it'll start to come together and get thicker and you can see I might just need a little bit more liquid because it's just getting more like a fudge instead of a sauce I use this chocolate sauce on everything you can ask my parents. I think I'm stirring it every single night because it's like that nightly fix that you get with that chocolate. 
goes great on power cake for dessert. On so many things, on strawberries, on bananas, with peanut butter. Really goes on anything. Because chocolate goes with mostly anything. Maybe except like seafood. I don't know if that would be good together. <laughs> Just thinking of things that might not go on, you know? So, all right. Now, nice and soaky and creamy. So that was about four or five, maybe six tablespoons. Just eyeball that. So we're gonna take our first little, making a mess already. First little um, saucer cup, dips, dip cup, <laughs> for lack of a better term. And pour in the chocolate sauce. Make sure you get every last drop because, or you can save some for yourself in the bottom of the bowl. Perfect. Look at that. All right. So if you want, you could probably clean up the sides to make it, from the pictures, that I like to post in my food, like on Instagram. I always try to clean up the edges of my plate a little bit. There you go. All right, first one's done, right? That took about what? I don't know, maybe it's way longer than I thought, but about like maybe a minute and a half, two minutes to throw together with like two ingredients. Next one, peanut fluff sauce is what I call this. This, so, so simple, peanut flour. It's kind of new to the world, I feel like. Um, you can find this at most, most like health food stores, I think, sell peanut flour now. It's basically just dehydrated peanuts, and I assume that the, the fat and the liquid and the moisture are taken out to dehydrate it, and then it turns into a flour. And the peanut fat is not bad for you. It, it's a healthy fat if you ate peanut butter. But the cool thing about the peanut flour is that you can throw it into your power cakes or use it as other types of flour. It's not as like um, gummy as it would be like a whole wheat flour with the gluten added, it would stick together. But the peanut flour just makes a really good addition to smoothies, to dipping sauces, to anything just where you want some peanut flavor. And it's loaded with protein. I believe a fourth cup of peanut flour has about 16 grams of protein, which is pretty awesome for peanuts, right? Peanuts are good. So we're gonna add in a fourth cup of peanut flour. And if there is no peanut allergies, maybe either not make this all together, the peanut flour, or just keep it separate in these containers so that it doesn't cross contaminate anything. So you're gonna take it, same like you did with the chocolate sauce. You can add, <coughs> usually the one that I get comes unsweetened. So I'm gonna add a few drops of stevia just to give it a little sweetness. And what I like to do is add a little bit of sea salt in just to give it that really like peanut buttery flavor with a little bit of salt, a little bit of sweetness. So just a little bit in there again to your preference. And then you're going to add the same amount of liquid, probably about four tablespoons we'll start with and mix that together. Again, if it gets too liquidy, just add some more peanut flour that you'll see need like probably it's, that's the magic number there that six tablespoons works for both of these learn something every day even though you make this every day I make this every day close to all right so all mixed together you'll see it come together like so okay so you'll see nice creamy peanut fluff sauce and we'll grab our second serving bowl and dump it right in. Again, save some for yourself. That's always fun, like the bottom of the bowl. There you go. So peanut sauce is done. And <laughs> we have more family coming over, which is wonderful for game day. So next we are gonna make chia jam, okay? So we're gonna use raspberries and blueberries. My grandparents just got here. Say hello, just say hi. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so they're coming over too, we've got a whole gang here. So we're gonna make chia jam, which is something that I did probably like a couple years ago when I came across chia seeds. 
not like everyone knows what chia seeds are. Again, they could be something that you're afraid of because you think of chia pets or something like that, but chia seeds are so good for us. That's what a lot of people think of, they think of chia pets. So chia seeds are so good for us, loaded again with those essential fatty acids that we all need. Um, protein, fiber, healthy fats, lots and lots of good things. And what they do, you can probably get a little up close of the chia seeds. Up close and personal with chia seeds. So, what it does, the chia actually absorbs nine times, I think, its size in body, body weight, I don't know if I say it, nine times its size with the liquid. So if you put it into like a cup of water, the chia seeds will absorb all the water and you'll be left with this like gel. So it's really great for puddings or if you're making a smoothie and you want it thicker or for sauces. But I love to literally combine it with just berries and a little bit of stevia just to kind of like combat the tartness maybe. And you don't even need to add that if you don't want and you just like how the berries are. But you're just going to blend it in a blender. Super simple. And then it will thicken up and you've got jam. How simple is that? If you're looking for a healthy alternative, maybe for your kids or for yourself, for jam, for their sandwiches or whatever you would put jam on, you can try this. So simple, pretty inexpensive too, and will make a really pretty centerpiece for the power cake. So we're gonna take about a cup, cup and a half, whoop, blueberries on the run. I'm using raspberries today and blueberries. Two of my favorites. Mm, so good. So, in goes the fruit into your blender or whatever you want to use for that. And about a fourth cup of chia seeds. <laughs> As I make a mess. The worst thing ever is when you spill chia seeds on the floor. <laughs> that is a not fun day of cleaning up after yourself. They get everywhere. So, I suggest maybe just taking your time and not pouring from a bigger bowl, like I just did. That's okay. We'll clean that up later. So we've got chia and raspberries and blueberries in the blender. You can find chia seeds at most health food stores. Most places sell them now. I mean, they're really, really available online. Um, really good thing to invest in. Lots of, lots of benefits from those. So I'm gonna blend this together. So simple. Make it a little noisy. Let's move some of our bowls. seconds later how simple was that look how beautiful that red color is literally right away just right into that awesome color so you will see the longer you let it sit the more thick it's gonna get chia seeds take a little bit of um, just a few minutes to thicken up just like the flax so I'm gonna add just a few drops of stevia in because again the people that are eating this today May like it a little more sweet. And I'm just gonna mix that together. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. You see how pretty this is? You're allowed to answer me out there. I'm not here by myself. <laughs> Mama Cakes loves some chia jam. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. So does mm -hmm. Papa Cakes too. My dad. If you can't tell, we, go, we go put cakes on the end of everything around here. So. Something that I remember always from childhood with the power cakes is that waking up on Sunday mornings, my mom would always, we'd always be out here. Sundays are like our favorite day around here. It's like the day you can just chill, relax, get everything ready for the week and just sleep in, have a big breakfast. And we would always, always make pancakes, right? And my mom would always say to my dad, did you make them power cakes? Huge wink, right? <laughs> and we didn't know what they were putting in them. so. Again, great way to sneak in some stuff, like the pumpkin, you could put carrots, you could put fruit, you could blend spinach in them, and they would be green, they'd be kind of cool, right? And you wouldn't even <laughs> taste the spinach. Um, really cool ways, though, just to mix things in to make them powerful. And I literally, we'd eat these all the time, and then we'd go to my games, and then we'd watch football. I mean, that's like what a Sunday around here during the season would be. You know, hang out by the fireplace, get a cup of tea, maybe not as a kid, but <laughs> now I do that <laughs> in my slippers and hang out. So we are gonna, so you'll see, okay, how thick that got. Can you see? You see how, whoop, 
might not be the most attractive shot there, but it gets real thick and you can make this even the day before. You can make all these the day before um, and then just pour them into the, or pour them and then cover them and store them. Oh my gosh, so pretty. In goes the Chia Jam. This would be great on sandwiches too. Just an FYI, with some peanut butter and some bread, maybe some gluten-free bread, if that's the route you go, and, ooh, good. All right, oh my gosh, it looks so pretty. All right, so you've got chocolate sauce, chia jam, and peanut fluff sauce, all there, ready to be eaten. Probably just, um, we can get little spreaders or little spoons and serve that up. Just top your power cake with it, and you're good to go, right? We'll get little plates, little napkins, and everyone will be happy. And they have different things to choose from because some people, it's like the question, like what's your favorite ice cream flavor? Like some people like vanilla, some people like chocolate, some people like, I don't know, butter pecan. I worked in an ice cream store. I'm trying to think of different flavors that we had. Monkey Madness, that was one of Angie's favorites, my sister-in-law. <laughs> um, but so you've got the berry flavor, the chocolate, and the peanut. So you can really make everybody happy. So let's take the ones that are already cold the power cakes out and I'm going to show you how. So you'll see with the parchment paper just comes sliding right off. So simple there. And I recommend, I like to use, um, shouldn't be, should be playing with a <laughs> pizza cutter like that, but I recommend using a pizza cutter to make nice lines. So you probably make enough that you can fit around, how many people do we have here? decent amount of us like right now. eight of us. Like eight of us. But you'll probably make enough that everyone could at least maybe have two or maybe more than that. So I'm going to cut them about like maybe two by two. Is that a normal? Bite-sized pieces. There you go. My audience is so helpful. Bite-sized pieces. <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to speak. You live here too. All right. So that's about... to be for breakfast and 12. So I've got 12 out of one of my squares. Which is awesome. Which is awesome. Yeah. Feeds a crumb. Oh, it smells so good. And you can see how they really hold up, right? Like they are sturdy, they're not going to fall apart, they're not crumbly, they're moist. And a lot of people don't like that word, but they're moist. So delicious. So we're just going to stack them around our dipping sauces. Like so. And we'll go back through with the other ones. Kind of. Alright, so we are back and I am finishing up cutting up the other power cake to put on the platter. I think it's about half time. I can hear my family start rustling away downstairs. They're getting pretty, they're getting pretty antsy. Their stomachs are grumbling. They're, <laughs> they're, ready. <laughs> they're ready for some power cakes. All right, so I'm gonna throw these in a nice way onto the platter. Look how pretty that looks. I have to say, it's a nice way to showcase a nice healthy snack for your family or friends that still tastes really good too. So, my family is coming up for halftime, and we are going to snack on some power cakes and say our hello. So, come on in, family. All right. Woo! All right, so you're going to grab a plate. Thank you. Take a piece, and then chocolate. Mm. You got berry, chia jam, peanut flour. <laughs> wow, look at all of us in one little circle. What is it? Mr. Papa Cakes right here asking what it is. Chocolate sauce, chia mm. jam, and peanut flour. It's yummy. Is it yummy? Mm hmm. Mm. Oh, Dad's going. Dad's going mm. all the above. Mm. Yeah. 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 I can't wait to eat the chocolate. This is good for your digestion. Oh, that's okay. Where are you going? It's all good. Yeah, going again. Okay. No, we can all do 10 push ups right now. After we're done. Maybe not on my stomach. Oh, there we go. Pat's getting the peanut, the chocolate. So come on over while in the. It's yummy. Boyfriend Corey should probably be introducing people. Nanny, Pat, Daddy, and Rita. Leave the brown I know. It's okay. We welcome him sometimes. All right. All right. So let's get all in the room. Oh!